Audio Jungle. Let's give it up for Forbes Riley! The reason you don't have what you want is you don't know what it is. I've grossed $2.5 billion by tweaking people's pitches on infomercials. You hear things differently than I do. I hear money every time somebody talks. I hear enrollment, engagement. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and today we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. She's got me, <laughs> she's got me working out of, what are these called? It's called a spin gym. She launched her multi-million dollar company by mortgaging her house and her kids' education fund. She knew it was gonna happen. I think pitch is everything. I don't care what kind of product that you've got. If you don't know how to pitch or articulate it, you will go nowhere. I coach. CEOs of Fortune 100 companies who have stood there and told me, Forbes, you pitch my company better than my marketing team. You don't get to sit home and wait for the phone to ring. No, it doesn't really work that way. You write down action steps. You get a mentor. You find someone who's done what you've done and you ask them how they did it. If you dream it and you hold it to be true, you keep driving towards that. You keep talking about that dream and actually you keep taking action. And then one day you're like, oh my God, how did I do that? I started out as an actress in Hollywood and a TV host, everything from the X Games to my own talk show. And about 20 years ago, I took the entrepreneurial route. I ended up on home shopping. I'm tired of seeing women suffer. I grew up heavy my whole life. My mom was 260 pounds and she was miserable. You want to be yourself. I appreciate that you want your family. That you want to be glamorous and gorgeous and fun and have people tell you that you're wonderful, don't you? You want all those things. Okay, I can't be the one to tell you that. You need to be the one to own that. And that's where your success lies. When someone says to you, what do you do? They do not care what you do. <gasps> they don't. No, they care what you can do for them. It's never the resources. It's not your time or your money. Billionaires have no more time than you and I have. They have resourcefulness. They have a deep down drive. And if I can empower you to do that, you can have everything you want. Let me make your life explode. I don't want to change it. I don't want to transform it. I want to make it the best version of you possible. You can all see that, right? I want to make sure you can see my slides. Let's make sure I've got it going on here. I'm going to find my chat. I'm going to set this up. But I got to tell you, something that I like more than anything is I like when I get started, and I'm just going to have to play it over here. Hang on a second, because I just, I need something. I need you guys to get up. You've been sitting for a while. So check this out. I know. Give me two seconds here. We're going to make it because I need some music. And I had it set up, but I was loving reading all the chats. I spaced. So there you go. Nobody is perfect. Don't tell anybody I'm not perfect. <laughs> and I'll just play it right here. So show me some love. Everybody ready to get started, ready to have some amazing fun. And I'm not kidding. Here we go. I need some energy. I mean, that's what I thrive on. Everyone says, oh, what do you think about Forbes? I'm going to say energetic. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, hang on a second. Not the Marvel. No, come on, come on, come on. Wait, 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 I love you so bad. That's what you say. You tell me, baby, baby, please don't go away. But when I play, I never stay. So every girl that I meet, yeah, this is what I say. Just crazy. Okay, that is how you turn it off. That was good, Forbes. All right, all right, all right. I am so excited to be here. I've got a promise for you guys. I promise you I was going to help you unlock your clarity, your communication, your confidence. Raise your hand if you want that. Now, can you guys see me on the screen? I'm not quite sure how this works. So um, if my beautiful Sanjin, will you come back so you can see the screen and me? That's good to know. We can see both of you. You can see the screen and you. Isn't that cute? All right. How about I tell you a story? I'm going to start at the beginning, and I don't normally do this, but I created something special just for you guys. I also want to set the timer because I could go for an hour and a half or more, but the truth is, guys, I only have 45 minutes with you guys, and if I keep doing this, we'll have like eight and a half minutes of content, so don't go away. I'm going to start that so I don't go over, but I give you just what you want. Raise your hand if you want something in your life. Why don't you put it in the box what you want? What is it that you want? I'm so curious. I've spent my whole life figuring out what people want. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to touch your soul because for so long I played this game by myself. I want to start with a story. Bear with me here. 
That's me. That was the first guy to ever put me up on a pedestal. That's my dad. I love my dad. My dad was a, a magician, an inventor, a dreamer. And he taught me to think outside the box. He taught me that there was no box. He didn't make a whole lot of money. He was a machinist. Um, oh, look at that. Uh-oh. What happened to my slides? Uh-oh. Oh, no. I have a whole slide deck here. Is there a reason my slides don't want to play? Wow. Um, huh, there's something that went wrong with my slides. Parts of the slides didn't load. I think just exit Forbes and then refresh the browser. I'll refresh the browser. You can tell I'm a little excited. This is my first time on this stage. And you know, here's the thing about that. Nothing ever goes right. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Even if the slides don't work. There's one. There's daddy. There's, oh, that's me on the phone. You guys remember that kind of a phone attached to a wall? Yeah, I started out life kind of cute. It didn't go well after that, but that's probably like the last cute picture that I have. Something happened. Um, I learned a lesson. Life is full of lessons. This is my family. It's my mom, my sister, my nieces, and my dad. And that's actually the last photo that I have of my dad, who died uh, 20 some odd years ago. There was a moment where I was alone in a room, looked just like this. It was nighttime. And, uh, and bear with me, because I'm going to share a story with you to set a stage. It was my shift. My dad had cancer and I booked an appointment for him the next day for an acupuncture. I knew he was going to be fine. In my world, everything was always fine up until that point. I had a, a pretty blessed life full of ups and downs. And the nurse woke me at 2.30 in the morning and she said, hey, call your mom and your sister. I said, why? She said, because your dad is dying. I said, no, no, you, you, don't, you know, my dad can't die. Dads don't die. What are you talking about? And she said, call your family. And I stood there for a while and I reflected on my entire life of all the things that I did and I didn't do. And I had a moment thought, it really can't come to an end, can it? And uh, his breathing got kind of weird. And I had a moment where it was just him and I. And I thought about my entire life. And I, you know, it's kind of lonely in this room right now. Cause like, you're not, you're not talking to me. Don't leave. And I said, thing I pleaded with him, please don't leave. And the nurse came in at three Oh eight. And she said, you need to give your dad permission. I'm like, excuse me. I said, yeah, you need to give your dad permission to die. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. She said, well, if you don't, he's going to suffer your choice. And I thought about it for a long time. It was 328. I looked at my dad and I held his hand. And I said, you know what? I love you. I'm going to miss you. And I'm going to give you permission to go be wherever you need to go. I learned that night the power of words, the power of one word. I learned that clarity, communication, and confidence are words that you need to own, or you're gonna miss the good parts of life. I didn't have a lot of those for most of my life. I tried very hard. And then this concept of permission, well, how come I don't have clarity? How come I'm not where I want to be? How come I don't have the relationships that I want? What if, and then one day I remembered the word permission. And I said, what if it's time that I grant myself permission to believe that I'm enough? That my dad's life wasn't in vain. That I, that I actually matter. That I'm not going to listen to the bullies that were external, the bullies in my head anymore. And I said, you know what I do really well? And I've always done it. I'm going to do it again. Because I dream. And I'm going to take you guys on a little journey. I don't have a lot of time, so bear with me here, because this is really important to you. You just listen to Robin talk about manifesting. I'm going to help you craft what you deserved to manifest. Would that be okay? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about dreams. I want you to, for a second, just take a big breath. I know many of you are typing, and I love that you're involved in this, but let this be about you. Take a big breath. It's been a challenging year for all of us, I know. It's also been a challenging life for some of us. I would like you to imagine for a second if your dream actually came true. See, I'm living one of my dreams right now. I'm talking to you. In that room, I was all by myself. There was no one to talk to. I was very alone. I've been alone most of my life. I have discovered through the power of the internet, the power of amazing people, that I don't have to be alone. And if I don't, neither do you. And there's a power in community. And by the way, I said that I don't have a lot of time today. 
I would like you to write this down. In fact, I'd like you to go join this right now. It's completely free. I charge for my training, but I'm not charging you guys. Real Summit reached out to me and said, hey, Forbes, you have a message. You have a power and a strength. We'd like you to join us and elevate everyone around us. And if I can see there's about 2,000 people here, go join that right now. Write it down because I'm going to forget at the end of the presentation to even invite you. It's on Thursday and it's free. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you what I know today and I'm going to teach you how to use it right there on Thursday. So please write that down. Share it so that everybody has it. There's no charge. If you want to understand how to build that dream and get what you want, no joke, you're going to join me and you're going to share it. Because what is your dream? Is it to have that beautiful house, to travel around the world? See, when I ask people about their dream, and I'm very public right now, I hear things like, I want to write my book. You know, my dream is I want a best-selling book. Writing, it's just an action step. Ooh, ooh, right? I want to start a family. You know what my dream is? I want to hold my grandkids. That's the dream. If I want to hold my grandkids, I better start finding a boyfriend right now. <laughs> Think about it. I wrote a lot of my dreams through an exercise I'll do on Thursday with you, where you begin from the end of your life. And when I did that the first time, I think I wrote something about, I want to be a powerful actress and a mother. And I was like, uh-oh, a mother? I'm not even dating anybody. And it was at that moment in my dream process that I thought, I better really start figuring this out. I didn't have my kids. I was 42. I almost missed it because I, I was too busy doing other things. Does that sound familiar? Say yes. If you've been a little too busy doing certain things and you forgot to dream, right? I'm seriously, I want to see a thousand yeses right now because I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Because lying on my, on my dad's deathbed, let me tell you something, in the garage in his house was all the inventions that he never got out to the world. It was, and it was packed. And I remember coming home to the garage going, dad, you left. You're not coming back. I, what do I do with all, all the dreams that you had that are going nowhere? And I will tell you, this happened 20 years ago. And it's fueled everything that I've done ever since, going do not die with a garage full of your dreams. It was horrible. It was horrible. And sudden. And you don't know. And you need to stop waiting. I've had books that have taken me three years to write. The last book I did, you want to see something? I did this book in 18 days. In 18 days from the conception to printing, 18 days. You want to know how to do that? You're going to come on Thursday because I figured some stuff out. There is no time to wait. What else do you dream? Oh, we want a big house? When? Did you hear, Robin? Pick out the house. Put it on your dream board. Stop telling me you want to be a billionaire. I want to help a billion people. <laughs> Tony Robbins doesn't help a billion people. What do you, who do you think you are? Help one. Hmm. Oh, I want tons and tons of money. I lived all over the world with a backpack and a Walkman for $20 a day. You don't need that to go traveling. You don't really even need the nice car, but get it if you want. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Most of you are so blaming, right? Here. Who do you, who do you blame? Just, just, you blame your parents? Oh, yeah. My mom is an alcoholic. My dad ran away. Oh, my education. I'm not college educated. Society. Yeah, they don't. Oh, COVID-19. That's my favorite. You know, more billionaires were made during COVID-19 while more beautiful, honest people lost their massage parlor or their bartending job waiting for it to go back to normal. Don't have resources? Think it's yourself? Come join me on Thursday. You want a cheerleader for your life? Yeah, and you may not have heard of me by the way before this because I have two beautiful 18 year olds and at 42, I made a decision that I wanted to be a mom and I waited a long time. And I said, I'm not gonna blow this. I traveled, I spoke, I did, I had a beautiful career but I didn't blow it up so that you know all about me. Now you will, my twins are 18. And now it is your time to find out why I'm so important. Can't believe I said that, but I'm not kidding. Because I'm an amazing cheerleader. I have crazy power and nobody knew it but my kids and they turned out to be great. Like my daughter often, I said to her, how'd you turn out the way you did? And she's like, mom, have you met my mom? So this is my year. Is it your year? So my dreams were to have a family. I wanted to be confident. I was an ugly, goofy little child and I'm gonna show this to you and I love people. Look, you're so pretty now. Yeah, well, where, where were you 20, 30 years ago when I didn't know that? I wanted to be successful. How do you even define success? So if I can, do I have your permission to say yes, I'm gonna show you some fun photos. Come on, say yes. And I love that you just registered. You just all registered, it's free. Really, what else are you gonna be doing on Thursday that's not about you? Watch this, okay? If you think any of these pictures are really cool, tell your friends to register too. I wanted babies. Oops, I didn't realize. Twins, look at that belly. I wanted to be pregnant, right? 
I also was going to give up my entire fitness career because look how big I got. It's okay. I also figured that out, how to get a tinier waist than I had. Those are my beautiful babies. Hard to tell which one's the girl and the boy. They're both so pretty. That's 18 years ago. I got a family. I wanted someone to love me. I know that's crazy. And I wanted someone to pour all my love into. And they turned out to be spectacular. I know not everybody gets that. I also raised a little boy who was murdered. This picture's not up here right now because I couldn't handle that. Not in this short of time. I'll show you. I'll let you meet him on Thursday. I raised him for 12 years of his life. A little black kid with a little white mom. Caught crazy, right? He was killed by a kid two blocks away who didn't have a mentor. Hmm. Hmm. I wanted to be pretty. This is so silly. I know. This is so goofy. I know I'm being so crazy, transparent. I wanted to be pretty. I was a little girl, right? Started out life so cute, except for the little gap in my teeth. So cute. Okay. The gap in my teeth ended up being braces for eight years. Literally, I had braces for my entire childhood because of that gap. I had a tongue structure at some point I talked like this. This is why I wanted to be pretty. I was chubby. I had big black frizzy hair. I had a big old belly and a broken nose and I wouldn't smile. I didn't smile for eight years. I was weirdly lonely as a kid. I got to tell you, I dreamed that one day I could be this pretty cover model. Want to hear something crazy? That is me. Although she didn't know she was ever going to turn out like that. That's the power of dreaming. I was goofy and ugly and fat and I was bullied and it was, it was terrible, terrible, terrible to be me. Oh, wait, wait, gets even worse. My beautiful dad, when I was in high school, he slipped, caught his hand in a printing press and it ripped off the entire front of his hand. My beautiful dad spent three years in hospital, had 15 operations, my entire high school. I didn't do anything that you all did. You know what I did every night? I went home to see that beautiful man in the hospital. <sighs> my dad's doctor offered to fix my nose. He felt so bad for my family. And one day I woke up kind of cute. And I know this sounds crazy. But I did. I had this dream that I was going to be even cuter than that. It was a dream of mine to turn into Forbes Riley. Well, guess what? Of all the crazy dreams in the world, I made that one happen. Hmm. Then I said, well, if I can do that, what else can I do? Can I find true love? First time around, I found a very wonderful man, father of my kids, challenging. Second time, I thought, okay, I want Prince Charming. Will you guys say if you want, let me know, are you in love? And if you're not in love, would you like to find Prince Charming or your princess? Just, it seems kind of right. Yeah, no. If you're in love, let me know. If you're not, that's okay. Let's, let's figure this out. I wasn't for a long time. I didn't know what love was. I was so used to being beaten up, right? And I love if you're in love with a great man. That's awesome. I want my Prince Charming too. I want, that's what Disney told me I should want, right? Someone to sweep me off my feet. And for the longest time, Anybody here make some bad choices? Yeah, I know who you are. I did a couple of those because I didn't love me enough. Then I thought, whoa, all right. I want someone to look like he walked off the cover of a romance novel. Do we think he's cute? Yeah, say yes if he's cute. Yeah, I would dream about a guy like that. And I'm 57 years old, right? Well, get this. I dream long enough that it came true. When I talk about manifesting miracles, I know. I found the guy who, when I met him, he said, I don't, he said, I don't really believe in all the spiritual stuff. He said, but something tells me that you need me. Over the last four years, that man has made a lot of my dreams come true. You want someone to love you like that. And you want some place to put you love. I found this out. I really did. I've discovered something I never saw before that maybe there is a happy ending to a lot of pain. What do you want? Okay. That's the story of right now. What do you want? Because I'm going to figure out that it's not about how hard you work for it. It's not. You want your dreams to come true, but you feel stuck. I'll tell you what, I got a solution for you. And it's an actual, honest solution that works. And it's been working for me. Here it is really quick. Number one, it is mindset. Absolutely mindset. I have a crazy, unique way of thinking about the world. Kind of like Robin does. Kind of like everyone you're going to hear. You're going to meet Les Brown. Those of us who've gotten to a certain place, we spend a lot of time with mindset. But I've got a bigger secret. You got to have a clear vision. But the one thing, the one word I told you in the beginning about giving yourself permission, I think the way to get whatever you want is the ability to pitch. I know that sounds crazy, right? And I'm not talking used car salesman at all. No, that's not what I'm talking about. A pitch is everything that you do. And I'm going to show you when you harness this power, you don't come off anything like that. I truly believe if you can pitch, you can get anything and everything you want. Anything and everything you want. 
You can go to your favorite restaurant. You're going to pitch yourself. You're going to pitch other people. You're going to pitch $10 million deals. All right, ready? Get out your pen and paper. No, you did not miss Les Brown. Les, I'm, op- I'm Les's opening act. All right, here we go. You know what pitching is? It's about the three E's. It's about exciting people. This is what I'm up to, right? I want to tell you what I'm up to. Here's all that I'm doing, right? Oh my gosh. I'm excited that you're here. I really am. I'm excited that you guys are all around the world listening to me. And I'm going to engage you. By the way, do you feel that I'm talking to you? Because I am. Yeah, that's one of the secrets that I actually teach. I've been in front of 85 million people on home shopping channels around the world. There's no such thing as an audience. There's just you sitting there going, wow, I don't know if I've ever had anybody talk into my heart like this. And then I'm going to enroll you. I'm going to enroll you to believe in you, to believe that I'm the one to be your biggest cheerleader or quarterback or whatever we're going to do here. And that together we can change the world. Maybe just one person at a time. You can also do this. I had a chance because of all these crazy things to, to meet all the people that I wanted from Paula Abdul to Beachbody's Tony Horton. Bob Proctor from The Secret is doing my fitness product. Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. I don't come from any money. I don't come from anywhere except that I wanted it. And my ability to pitch, that's, that's the best pitcher in the world. That was Billy Mays. Ed Milet. John, how do you pitch to be next to John DeVolta? There's my daughter. I gave Kim Kardashian her start in an infomercial. Yeah, go to YouTube and check that out. The power of the pitch, right? There's Grant Cardone and Ty Lopez and all the people that you guys love, right? I know. I've pitched all of them. They've all pitched me. How do you think they get where they are? They harness this. And if you understand what I'm talking about here, there's our man from Wishman, the movie, Betty White. I pitched on her telethon. We grossed more money than they've ever done before. The cast of the soap operas I was on. Oh, wait. And there's Les Brown. He actually is the greatest pitcher of all time. How did I get here? Guys, this is a dream of mine, but it isn't about me. It's how do we get to inspire you? Oh, wait, let's see what, what does Les have to say? One powerful, positive relationship can make a difference in your life. That's what Forbes Riley has done for me, for my business, for me personally. And I encourage you, as you look at your goals and dreams, make sure you align yourself with people that will challenge you, that will hold you accountable, and that will bring the best out of you. Forbes Riley is one of those kind of people. And when you're looking for a speaker that can transform your audience and create value so that they leave your presence feeling better about themselves, talking about you because of the impact that she brought. Forbes Riley, that's the one. I believe in her, and I can tell you, she will deliver for you. You have something special, you have greatness in you. Call Forbes Riley because she will bring that greatness out. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. One How does that out. man get to be my mentor and I get to be his? I wanted to be a speaker 15 years ago, and I had no idea how, and I'm going to show you that's the most important thing. It's okay if you don't know how. This little power of the pitch, it's allowed me to do 192 infomercials, guys, and gross a little over $2 billion. Yeah, want to learn how? Here's real quick. See, most of you think about pitching wrong. You think pitching is, oh, I'm just going to sell somebody something. No, wait, watch this. Pitch. For me, it's about having passion and purpose and power and persistence. The I in pitch for me is about imagination, intuition, influence, inspiration. See how I'm changing what pitch means? Pitch isn't what you thought. It's all that I do all day long. It's transforming and timing and tenacity and just being triumphant. It's winning. That's what pitch is. It's being creative and having clarity, communication, and confidence. I wasn't what you're seeing now. I put all this together. And I'm packaged it up and I'm going to show you how. And I'm going to give you exactly what I did. And then I'm going to show you how to use it on Thursday. Are you in? Say yes. Because I need to hear that you guys are here. I see a couple. I don't see. I need to see a thousand. Come on, you guys. Yeah. So now here's the big problem with most of you, like me. You got all the P-I-T-C-H. We love that, Forbes. But, but what? But how do we do it? <laughs> you know what's great about that? You don't ask a baby how they're crawling on the floor. How do I walk, mommy? I keep bumping my head and falling down. If entrepreneurs were babies, we, uh, we'd still be in diapers and crawling. Yeah, you're going to fail a lot. You're going to bump your head and that's okay. That's okay. Because we all seem to learn how to walk and speak. We didn't ask how. So join me on Thursday. I'm going to give you the answer right now. I'm literally going to give it to you. I'm going to practice with you on Thursday. Because just like everyone said before me, you can watch Serena Williams play tennis all day long, 
doesn't make you a better tennis player. I'm going to give you the answer and you're going to go, well, how? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about how. Trust me on this one. I got you. And I'm not charging for this at all. Okay. Best offer of the day. How about it? Come on, say, can you say free? Everyone just say free here. I know the best things in life are free or nothing in life is free. I, this time I am. This time I'm going to give it away. Now, here's the problem with free. And I'm going to challenge you. I wanted them to charge for this. And I said, if you don't charge, they don't show up. If you give for free. And the whole team said, no, no, no. They're going to love you so much. They're going to show up. So it's up to you guys. I'll give it to you. Please join me on Thursday. Okay. I'm going to give you a five-step formula. I'm going to actually give it to you right now. If that's okay. I'm going to show you the, how to use it. Like the car is nice, but if you don't know how to drive it, what good is it? Again, it's on Thursday and it's completely free. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's okay. I know that if you perfect your pitch, you know what you're going to do? Whatever business idea or product or service you have in your head, you're going to 10X your income because more people are going to want you. This is a crazy thing. And I'll tell you what, it's taken me my entire career. I've been pitching on television. There is no bigger pitcher as a female than me. Huh? So say yes if you want the formula. Come on, here we go. I mean, I just need to know if you want it because I know what I got to offer. I see about 100, 200. I need to see 4,000. Come on, guys. My room can hold 6,000 people. We do 6,000 on Clubhouse all the time. Hmm. All right, you ready? Here we go. This is the pitch formula that I use every single time whenever I've done a product. And if I asked you right now to pick up a household object and pitch it to me, most of you would go, oh, well, it's a, it's a pair of eyeglasses and you should buy them. And this is, oh, no, no, no. Are you ready? This is the good stuff. And don't worry, it's all coming to you on Thursday. Number one, I always key into what a relatability factor is. A relatability factor is something about you. Hey, you know what, guys? I grew up with no money. So I understand it. These are a little more expensive, but it's worth it. You don't need five pair of glasses, just one pair of well-made glasses. Or a relatability factor might be, oh, I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. These are expensive. And you know what? They're worth every penny. Oh, relatability factor might be, hey, I'm a trend spotter. I know that this is the cutting edge kind of look and I'm always first to market. You're going to want to know more. Or I'm always left behind the trends. I just found out about Bitcoin. Oh, <laughs> But I'll tell you what, when I do find something good, so a relatability factor, right? I can tell it to you, but if you don't practice it, when you practice it though, it's something you've never even imagined. Relatability factors make you real, feel really good about yourself because it's wherever you are. If you are overweight and you're selling a fitness product like this, I got my spin gym here. If you're overweight, that's okay because here's your relatability factor. Hey guys, you know what? I've got an extra hundred pounds to lose and I'm gonna go on this journey with you and together we can do this. Or a relatability factor. I am super buff. And I'll tell you what, in between sets at the gym, this is what I use. Relatability factors are the first thing I created because it makes you realize that you matter. Okay. Then let's go deeper. See, a lot of you are too afraid. You're like, well, Forbes, you know, you're so good at what you do. How good, how good I am has nothing to do with how good you are. Okay. It's set here to inspire you. Now this one will save your life. All right. Not a joke. A springboard story. It's something that gets people to connect with you at a level. Raise your hand if you got a dad. Who has a dad here? Say yes. Everybody had a dad? You either had a dad, don't know, maybe, but yeah. I started out my story today talking about my dad, a man that I love more than anything. Did you feel my heart? That wasn't a joke. I didn't make that up. I, I've never told that story before that way. But I said, I'm on, a, I'm on a new journey. This really is a new journey. And Real Summit's a great place for me to be. And I think I might've touched your heartstrings. I know I touched my own. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not. A springboard story is your story, a story that nobody else can tell. Why do you do what you do? Why do I do fitness? So many people will say, oh, I do it because I love it. It makes me feel good. No, you know why I do fitness? Because my mom was 260 pounds my entire life. I took her to a health club. I bought a year long membership. I said, come on, mom, let's go. And she said, I can't. Said, what do you mean you can't? Come on, come on, let's go. I, I bought your membership. I said, I can't. I said, yeah, yeah, you can. She started crying and she said, baby, they're going to make fun of me. I'm afraid to go in there. And I don't, I just want to go home. And she started crying. I stood there and I thought, okay, I'm going to take all my knowledge, all the things that I do. And I'm going to make a part of my existence, my mission to help women like my mom who are stuck at home, have products that are affordable and portable and pretty. That's my springboard story. Nobody else can tell that story. You have a story that when you push comes to shove and you want to close a deal, you pop out that story. And I will tell you what, I've seen it work. I helped somebody close a $25 million investment. 
his springboard story. And he said, Forbes, I, I, I told this story and they just, they, they fell in love. I know that. Again, if you just do it on your own, you know, but if you got to practice it with me, I will tell you when and where to interject that and your life will change. Pitch gets you anything and everything you want. Isn't this crazy? I know, right? Assumptions. This is a great, oh my gosh. Especially if you're on Clubhouse, guys. You all, I say, come on, let's pitch me. Well, Forbes, you know, in the fitness industry, it's a four by two billion dollar. Could you start with an assumption that you're not talking to a billboard, but you're talking to me and a thousand other people listening? So let's make an assumption about them. Hey, Forbes, I know you're in the fitness industry and I've created this maybe because of my springboard story and my related. Oh, I'll tell you what. Go to Clubhouse and listen to people pitch and you're going to go, Forbes, they don't do any of those things, but you will. Got it? Everybody say, got it. Come on, let me see this. Come on, Debbie and Simon and Marianne. I see you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about you getting it. Yeah, this is not a joke. I want a whole community around the world to go, I got it. I've been Forbes because there's a crazy thing about that. And I have to find the book because I wasn't planning on doing this. But what have you Forbes lately? I have a whole word for it. You can manifest wish or dream. But when you create something that nobody else thought you could, you know what that's called? It's called Forbesing it. Yeah, and I often ask, what have you Forbes lately? I thought it was being on the stage with Les Brown, Jack Canfield, Deepak Chopra, and right in your head and your heart. I've wanted this forever. You know how long I talk to hairbrushes in the mirror? Think about it. <laughs> All right, but I'm not done. The hub. This is the other thing you guys do. This makes me crazy. This is horrible. You tell me this wonderful story. I'm relating to you. And then you stop before you told me what you're actually selling or enrolling me into. Oh, oh, well, it's a coaching program. Oh, well, it's this. And then I can go even deeper into that because most of you can't tell the difference between features and benefits. And so you muddy it all up. And most of us are left going, I had a dear friend of mine. Oh my gosh, I won't say his name, I want to, but he had a great product on Shark Tank. My client got to all of this and then he just muddied. They loved him when he walked in. It was an awesome opening. By the end of it, they were so confused that he left with no deal. Don't do that, don't do that. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna show you my patented grid here. You put it all together and when you get good at it, oh my gosh, you can pitch anything, anytime, anywhere, your life gets better. This is what I'm talking about in terms of pitch and it really does work. That's what's so crazy, right? So when you come hang out with me, let's see, what are you gonna get? Besides just be so excited. How about you make more money and just get more yeses? And I do charge for this. I'm not charging on Thursday at all. It's free, I think you got that it's free. Come on, here's the deal. You've watched me talk to you. Hopefully you're engaged and enrolled. You can watch my infomercials. It doesn't make you a better pitcher. I've watched a lot of Serena. She was a business partner of mine in Cool Towels. You know what's funny about her? I didn't realize she had like five coaches when we were talking. And she said to me, I have a money coach and a food coach. And then she said she had a tennis coach. And I'm like, what, 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 you're the best tennis player in the world. Who's going to coach you? And she looked at me. She said, you're kidding. I'm like, no. She said, Forbes, I only know what I do. I can't see what my opponent's doing. I can't see the bigger picture. I can't see where maybe I'm getting a little sloppy, but my coach can. That changed a lot for me. I've had a coach ever since. And if you don't have one, two, or three, how do you expect to play your best game? All right, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Don't worry, I won't ask you to die. But I might ask you to live. Do I have your permission? Say this with me. Just say this out loud. I hereby... Grant you, and not you, but you, literally look in the mirror and say, I hereby grant you permission to, and then fill in the blank. What do you want permission to do? I hereby granted myself permission to create an amazing life, to be a great mom, great wife, and to be of service to as many people who are smart enough to listen to me and take action. I've been teaching pitch forever. I've been doing it. Like I said, it grossed me two and a half billion dollars. I'm going to go do my 193rd infomercial next week. And it's a fitness product. You believe it? Yeah. I want you to be able to pitch anytime and close deals and sell through Facebook and make money on the fly and have crazy confidence and build accountability and network. Because you know what? On the other side of fear is unbelievable. It's unbelievableness. It's fun. I have a community of people that's unbelievable. Oh. I'm living the best life ever because I stopped playing small and believing all the bullshit that everyone else told me that you can't do this and you shouldn't do that. They're wrong. I'm going to say you can. And while I love a lot of my male speakers, my big rock stars from Tony Robbins and Les Brown and Deepak Chopra, I love me my girls. We're moms. We're women. We're nurturing. We love. We don't start wars. Hmm. So can you imagine your idea, your business, whatever it is, 
and living the life of your dreams. It's so extraordinary when you do this, that it's, it's just, life just gets better. So number one, are we ready to get started? Now, I do want to take this down for a second and stop this and come full screen and hopefully I can. How do I stop sharing? I'm gonna stop my sharing and I'm gonna come back to you guys because the last few minutes that I have here, I just wanna be you and me. You know, if you start practicing what I'm preaching and one believing in yourself, write this down. This is one of my favorites. I like you said, I hereby grant permission to build your legacy for all. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, one piece at a time. Every time one of you graduates from my world and says, you know what, I think differently. I'm Forbesing and I get Forbes all the time. I love hearing from you guys. We have a bracelet. You know, what have you Forbes lately? What would Forbes do? I sometimes don't even know that I'm Forbes. It's so cool. I mean, seriously, I didn't start out life this way, you guys. I started out life as Francine. Yeah. And that's okay. I went to an image consultant one day after I'd broken my knee and my boyfriend at the time was, we were both so down. And when you are down, there's two things that you must do. You must serve somebody else. Go find a kid who's hungry. Go serve some food to somebody who hasn't eaten a meal in three days. Your life gets exponentially better. Yeah, you just start to feel better about you. And then work on yourself. Go learn something. Now is the greatest time ever. You know, it's been a little challenging for me and that beautiful man that you saw. January 2nd of last year, he was on his motorcycle and he got hit by a car with a, by a kid with no insurance, by the way. He ended up in the hospital in surgery. And I don't have a family. I don't know mom and dad or aunts and uncles. It's pretty much me and my kids. And it was challenging. Six months he spent in a wheelchair, withered away to nothing. And then he woke up one day because he's a champion. He's a three-time world physique champion. And even though he walks with a cane at the moment, I watched him decide that the life he was doing for the last six months wasn't good enough. That what happened to him is not going to define him but he's gonna define it. And life and change begins with a decision. What's your decision right now? I asked you, what do you want? Well, if you want it bad enough, then decide that that's what you want. You want a great life. You want to leave a legacy. You wanna lose 10 pounds. It's okay, go get some stuff. The more you get, the more you win, the better you feel, the better life gets freaking exponentially unbelievable. That's where I'm living right now. I'm on a roll. And by the way, I'm going to mention the beautiful girl who's watching this right now. She just turned 18. That little girl that you saw, she's my business partner. She sat me down when Joshua went back to the gym. And she said, Mom, I'm my last year in high school, but I've been doing digital marketing for five years. And you're not online in the right way. I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. She said, I think I can do something with you. And you know what? I said, okay. And she's pretty tough. She said, I just want you to don't not, I just want you to focus on one thing. Now I'd heard that my whole life. You should really focus. That's the problem with a lot of, a lot of summit speakers, right? They get you all excited, but they don't give you actionable plans. I'm all about actionable plans. That's what Thursday is about. You want to take action. That's where you're going to be. We're going to get stuff done the same way my daughter did. She sat me down and said, mom, I know you love to teach this pitching thing. How about we create a class? We'll create our first little two hour training that you're going to come to on Thursday. And then from that, we're gonna teach people how to master the camera like you do. You're so good at that. And then I had this idea about a thing called OPP, other people's platforms, which I'm on right now. I'm leveraging my time and talent on Real Summit and here we are. Well, you can do that too. You can also leverage podcasts. There's so many little things that you can do with no extra money that you don't even realize is available to you, okay? Yeah. So our first month in business, that little girl who hadn't graduated high school yet, grossed six figures. I don't know many 17 year olds that made $100,000. Don't tell anybody, that's more than her teachers make. And they keep yelling at her to do her Spanish and her calculus. And I wanna yell back going, really? She's doing pretty good. She's got a couple of employees. She's employing people around the world and she's doing great. You need to learn from her. Well, I've learned a lot in the last six months. It's been the most amazing ride. But at the end of the day, like I said, I, I wasn't ready before my kids were 18 to devote this kind of time to you. I am now. And by the way, this is one of the first big speeches I've done since they turned 18. And I decided that they don't need me as much, but you do. And I need you. It's kind of a two-way street here. I've been sitting here on Zoom talking to God, tens of thousands of people around the world. I have a student in the Amazon, 
in Peru. I have Iceland and I have Australia. We're global guys. That is one of the benefits of this crazy pandemic. We may not be able to sit and have coffee together unless we want. Yeah, go grab a cup of water. Come on. Here. I've eaten meals this way. It's kind of safe, but it's cool, right? All around the world. I met more people, had more interactions and more fun from the comfort of my living room. And I invite you to come join and do, me, to do that with me. And the last thing that I just want to leave you with, I'm thinking about my dad and I am reminded of a moment we were in the hospital together and indulge me just for a second. He's got that, that IV and we're walking around with the IV and we're talking. And we came to this group of wires and cord. They were reconstructing part of the hospital. There was paper hung, I mean, plastic hung everywhere. And he looked at me and he said, I'm pretty proud of you. I said, I'm, you know, trying not to cry because that doesn't do you very good. And he said, you always manage to jump. I said, Dad, what are you talking about? He said, I've watched you. He said, you've never even had a real job. You made more money than I did when you were in your 20s. And I knew that. And he didn't. It's kind of interesting. He said, but you have a way of jumping into life. He said, I never did. I played it safe. I played it small. I was very comfortable. I raised you kids. But I wanted to. I really wanted to do something a little bit more. I said, okay, Dad, well. And he said, well, I'm going to do it. And I'm looking at him in the little gown with, I think his butt was kind of hanging out. I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to jump. I'm like, okay, dad. And he put his IV thing on the other side of this thing of, of, of cords. I said, okay, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to jump. <laughs> okay. And he did. He just jumped over and he fell on the floor. And I'm kind of freaking out. I'm like, what, what just happened here? And he looks up at me and he's smiling. He's like, this baby, I wish I'd jump sooner. Well, I wish he had to, because that was the last day of his life. And I look at you guys, your, your wives, your sons, your husbands, your sisters, your brothers. When does it get to be too late? I'm going to ask you to jump into your own life, to dream a little bigger than you would have imagined. That's what I'm doing right now, and I'm loving it. And maybe it's hard for some of us, you know, it's not, it's not easy, um, but it doesn't mean you don't get to do it. So here's what I want you to do. If you're in the privacy of your own home, do it loud. If you're not, do it quiet. Why don't you think of one thing that you'd like to have come true, a dream of yours that hasn't happened yet, but you really can see it and taste it. Okay. Imagine that right in the back of your head somewhere. Bring it forward. Put it in your heart. One, one. I'm going to whisper three, two, one. And then I'm going to say jump. And let's see if we can collectively around the world, we are all global right now, just invite one amazing dream to come true. What do you say? You ready? Say yes if you're ready. Come on, I want to see you guys if you're ready. Imagine collectively that the word jump could go around, that means that it inspires everybody's hearts around the world to take action, to find your personal greatness, your dream, hold on to everybody else's as though, maybe put your hands up to I don't know where, because maybe I can feel all of you at the same time, and I'm gonna do it as loud as I can, and everyone in the house, it doesn't matter. Are you guys ready? Because I'm ready. Three, two, one. And on that note, I'll give it back to you guys. That was fun. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoo, Forbes, that was a roller coaster of an experience. You took me here, you took me there, you brought me back. 
And I almost like really teared up because, you know, you speak about your dad so endearingly and I didn't get to know my dad except in the way I share it, of course, within my own story. And um, every time you were just speaking, like literally even now, my heart is just like boom, 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 you know, and I think the story you shared at the end about, you know, your dad saying like he wished he jumps. Oh, I'm trying not to get choked up. Um, he wished he jumped sooner. And I think you, you just tied it in so beautifully for all of us that how many times do we not jump? How many times do we hold ourselves back from living a life that we know we were born to, to live? Because all of us have that soul calling. Nothing will ever call you from your soul that's not meant for you. And I think your talk, I think what you're going to be offering on Thursday is just going to move people. I'm trying, I'm going to hand it over to Satch so that I don't, yeah. you know. Because Candace, what are you feeling? It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. You'll fix your mascara a little later because that is, this is what we've done to each other all along. Oh, it's okay. You know what? It's not okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel. I've spent way too much time putting all of that down. And if you stuff your emotions down, it comes out and makes your hips bigger. Trust me. <laughs> oh, you guys are saying about jumping. And I was thinking about Thursday. It's like, it's like jumping with a safety net, the fact that it's free. So go out there. I've been smiling this entire time. I'm so smitten by this because my love language is sales. And that's the language that Forbes is speaking the entire time. It's just incredible the way that she, she brought this to us. You know, our entire team is going on in the background. Just what a powerhouse, how incredible you are. Where have you been all our lives? Because wow. the amount of knowledge and excitement enthusiasm that you bring to these people because you know there's a saying uh life's a bee and then you die i have the saying that life's a pitch and then you buy and <laughs> whether you need whether you need to pitch your your spouse your kids anyone you're gonna give them that power on thursday oh wait till i show you the difference between wants versus needs you know the thing that's the biggest problem people do they tell you what you need oh yeah you need to come to this and you need that and you need that i'll tell you what you get people to want what you've got and it's a home run every time. I'm going to show you that on Thursday. I'm going to show you the difference between features and benefits. And I'm going to show you how the beautiful man that just popped in there has also touched my heart. Cause you got to be what you got to be hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is, and some of the things that I teach, no one's ever done before. And I'd say, and that's the truth. Where have I been? I've been making money. I've been working my butt off for my family. And then there wasn't enough time. I, I'm friends with Tony Robbins, son, Jared. And, and Tony, this is his third marriage. I get it. He devotes so much time to other people. I didn't, I, at the end of my life, guys, just to be really clear, as much as I love all 2,000 of you, there's going to be two of you standing at my bedside. You'll all go, wow, that's really sad. She touched my heart and I loved her, but there'll be two going, mommy, don't leave. And that's why I'm doing it. And I did a good job up till now. And now all the things that I've known that I've not let out to the world, I told you, this is my time. This is my year. And I'm going to touch people in a way that it's a movement. I don't know that I've ever heard a female voice like mine before. So I decided that I get to be it. And Candace, you get to be there with me. And it's not anything against men because I love how Sage is smiling at us. But we have a journey that's challenging. Best thing about Clubhouse right now, I don't have to put on the hair and the makeup girl. That is why I'm crushing that platform. As Kim Kardashian is to Instagram with her 200 million, I am that to Clubhouse because this voice, this passion, this is here 24-7. It's always been here. But it's challenging to put the lips and the nails and that bullshit. You know yeah. what? Tony Robbins can walk out with a pair of t-shirt and a pair of sneakers. A little hard for you and I to do that and be taken seriously. All right. I got to tell you, I got a couple of wigs in the back room. I got some lipstick. We're going to figure this out. But watch out because there's a voice that you haven't heard that needs to be heard. Forbes, you are revolutionary. I am a complete feminist and I look at women like you and I always just stand in awe and in gratitude because what you are doing is paving the way for women like me and uh, what you are creating and what you are, you know, carving and teaching is allowing women like me to not have to crush as hard and to not have to hit that glass ceiling as hard. And, you know, we're going to have to do it for the next generation, but I just want to thank you because, you know, without women like you, women like me don't exist. So thank you. I just want to take a moment and thank our audience. I mean, I got Anna <laughs> over here. I got someone who says, I've never heard of you, but now I'll never forget you. You know what that just, I'm going to, can you send me some of this chat? Because it's so touching. I've got a woman who says, I, she screams so loud that she woke her entire house up. I scream really loud too. That wasn't a joke. That is every time. I've no idea Forbes is, and I just jumped on right now, but this is moving. 
Greg, let me tell you, I, I have been up since 2.30 in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you guys, because I needed this. I was willing to play small until now, but it, it's not happening anymore. Now it is about you guys. And those kind of notes, that's what I actually need to hear as well, because it's challenging, but I'm, I'm going strong. Yeah. You are getting these comments because they are lovely. People are loving you. Their hearts everywhere. People are saying, you know, your passion, your heart, you're an inspiration. You made them cry. You made them feel. Forbes is amazing. Forbes is a gift. I just love her. I'm moved by her. Uh, you know, met you for a reason. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than when someone can look at you on a screen and say, I know why I'm here today. And she is it. You are an inspiration. You are going to help me make my destiny come true. First time hearing of you, but I love you. I mean, Forbes, you, you've definitely impacted my life and you've impacted the lives of thousands and thousands of people on this chat today. So thank you guys. You. Thank you to Brian and Dinah who believed in me and gave me a shot here. I appreciate that. This is my first time. McKenna is obviously watching. That is my daughter down there. Uh, yeah, we're on a mission. And I'm, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me.